Hello, Algebra 2 students. Um, I'm coming to you with a uh, final review video. Um, we did this material on Zoom class around two weeks ago, but I just wanted to make sure that um, the, avail the information was available in a video so you can check it out um, at any time. So in this quick class, we're gonna be reviewing exponentials, logs, word problems with exponentials, and also some rational functions. So it should be pretty cool. So without further ado, I'm going to just start on some problems and share my whiteboard. Okay, so, um, you know, the first thing we're working is solving with exponentials. So um, the first example is gonna be 12 to the x power equals nine. So the way that we solve this is we use a logarithmic form. So we're in exponential form now, we're gonna to switch to logarithmic form, which would be log base 12, so the 12 is the number under the exponent, and then of nine, which is the answer, equals the exponent. So that's how you switch between the two. It's a really important skill to know how to do. Practice it, learn it, love it, et cetera. So um, then we get to this point, and we know that we have to use change of base formula, which is the log of the answer divided by the log of the base, because our calculators are only um, good for log the you know, common log, which is technically log base 10. Um, so when you do this, you find that x is equal to 0 0.88. And so that actually sounds pretty good because you can check your answer with what you know. Like 12, what is it? 9 is less than 12. So you know that the answer should be less than 1 because if 12 to the first power is 12. And anything less than that would have a, an exponent less than that. So there you go. So the second one, we're going to get a little bit more complicated. And in this case, you're going to have to just, um, you know, it might look a little bit stranger, but it's not that bad. OK, so we have x 8 up to the x minus 5 equals 154. Um, so we're going to switch to a logarithmic form. So we'll do log base 8 of 154 equals x minus 5. So you have to bring that whole x minus 5, the whole exponent goes after the equal sign. So doing your change of base formula, you do log of the answer divided by the log of the base. Um, and that's going to be uh, 2.42. And so you know that 2.42 equals x minus 5. And at this point, it's just algebra 1. So you're going to add 5 on both sides. And then you're left with x equals 7.42. Pretty good. OK, and then um, the next thing we're going to do is make it a little bit more complex. So we'll have 5x plus 1 minus 8 equals 61. OK, so when you get to this point, um, you, you can't switch to logarithmic form unless you've isolated the exponential. So I'm going to move this plus 8. I'm going to move this 8 to the other side by adding on both sides first. And I'm going to get 5 to the x plus 1 equals 69. And then the process is the exact same as it was when I was doing the other problems. So I'll do log base 5 of 69 equals x plus 1. You do log of the, the answer over log of the base. And then that's going to equal 2.63. I've done all these in advance. So, you know, you should you feel free to pause um, and do this on your own time. So we've got 2.63 equals x plus 1, right? Then just minus one on both sides, and then your answer should be x equals 1.63. All right, so again, take a moment to write these notes if you missed any, and um, we're gonna move on to the next topic. So pause here, and we're gonna move on. Okay, so the next thing is solving with logs. So, Instead of solving with exponentials, we're going to solve to logs. And the key to doing this is just switching it back to the other form. So I'll have something like this. 
long base three of one half x equals five. So I have to switch over to exponential form to solve this. So I know that exponential form is the base and then the exponent and then the answer. And then three up to the fifth power, I can do that on my calculator. So that's 243 equals one half x. So then I'll multiply by two on both sides to isolate the x. And I know that my answer is gonna be 486. All right, let's make it a little bit more challenging now. So we'll have log base six of three x and then plus eight. So um, equals 10. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to isolate this log. So I'm gonna subtract eight on both sides. And then I'm gonna get log base six of three x equals two. And now I can switch it to exponential form. So I'm gonna do the base, which is six, the exponent, which is two, and the answer, which is three x. Six squared is 36 equals three x to isolate the x divide by three and you're left with x equals 12. Not too bad, okay? So that's how to solve logs. So be aware. Okay, pause, take your notes, and we're gonna move on. So for the next one, I'm gonna use my PowerPoint, or sorry, my Google Slides. So I'm gonna move in just a second, okay? So we're gonna switch over to um, Google. Google Slides, which I think is right here. Uh, uh, okay, so for this one, um, chipmunks reproduce at a rate of 25% a year. If there are 15 chipmunks, how many chipmunks would there be after six years? So for, for this, you have to kind of just remember your formula a little bit. So the amount, the final amount, is gonna be equal to the initial amount, which is represented by A0, um, multiplied by one plus the rate, and then the exponent is your time, right? So for this case, I know that the rate is 25. And remember, the rate should always be written as a decimal instead of a percent. So for this one, it's gonna be 0 0.25. Um, we know that we start with 15 chipmunks, so that's our A0. And then we know we're trying to figure out how many chipmunks there are gonna be after six years. Um, so that's gonna be our time. So filling this in, I'm gonna get, you know, A equals 15, one plus 0 0.25 up to the sixth power. And then if you do this all in your calculator, you should get 57. I rounded up to the, you know, a number, a whole number, just because you want to make sure that, you know, you can't have half a chipmunk, <laughs> right? So use your knowledge about that. Okay, so the key for these problems is just remembering this um, equation and putting it in where it is. So I'd also like to say that this, these problems are a little different than the compound interest problems, which we're going to look at next. So I'm gonna erase this and move on. Pause if you need to. Okay, so for this one, we have DV deposited $10,000 into a savings account with a 2% interest rate that is compounded weekly. After 10 years, how much money will he have? All right, I think I might have the, the thing on the next slide. Yes, I do, perfect. So um, here's the equation that you should be using. And again, you'll, you're gonna be given this during the exam on a reference sheet. So what I like to do is I just like to underline everything. Um, so $10,000 is what he starts with. That's our principal. Um, then our interest rate is two. So that's our R. I'm gonna write that as 0 0.02, just so I remember, because remember two divided by 100, that's how you get that decimal from a percent compounded weekly. So this is gonna give me my N value. So I know that there's 
52 weeks in a year, and that's how often it's compounded. And then we're talking 10 years, which is our T, time in years. So I'll go ahead and fill in my, my equation. So it'd be 10,000, then one plus our rate, which is 0 0.02 over 52. And then um, to the NT, so it'd be 52 times 10. All right, so you know if you do this on your calculator, the trick is just making sure your parentheses are rock solid. Um, you know, because you can get a right answer. So, you know, when you're solving it, you should be able to use your logic a little bit. Be like, okay, my answer should be greater than 10,000, but not totally greater than, you know, not like some crazy number. Um, so once you do all of this out, um, you're going to get the final answer is going to be this. Um, which is, you know, $12,213.56. Just make sure you're rounding to the nearest cent. All right, so that's important. Um, and then, so the next thing we're going to work on is rationals. So pause if you need to, and then we're going to move on. Ah, so I'm going to go back to the whiteboard for rationals. But um, before we move on, just remember that if you need help remembering the n values, if you see the word daily, there's 365 days in the year. So your n value is 365. Weekly, there's 52 weeks in the year. Monthly, there's 12 weeks in the year. Quarterly, that would be four times a year. Biannually would be two times a year. And annually would just be one. Um, so moving on. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we're going to go back to the white border for a little bit and work on some rationals. So um, there's going to be no adding and subtracting rationals on the final or graphing rationals. So you are lucky, you're welcome. Um, you know, that, that those are pretty difficult, but um, we're going to be focusing on how to find a vertical asymptote and how to. Um, also solve for, you know, when you're multiplying and subtracting, sorry, multiplying and dividing rationals. Um, but never fear uh, your hard work on those, the harder topics like adding and subtracting rationals and graphing rationals, those are gonna be helpful when you do get to pre-cal next year. Okay, so moving, moving right along, the first thing I wanna work on is asymptote. Okay, forgot a P there. So like I say, if you have a function such as this, one over x minus one, all right? So um, to find the vertical asymptote, which you need to do is set the denominator to zero because that's why vertical asymptotes exist because there's no way in math that you can divide by zero. It just doesn't work. So, you know, you can't have a value that when the denominator is equal to zero. So we'll do x minus 1 equals 0. We'll add 1 on both sides. And then I know that there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. I'll abbreviate that with VA, vertical asymptote. So let's try with something a little different. So, you know, sometimes you'll see more, you know, gnarly rational functions. So we'll do x squared plus 7. Um, and then x plus 4. The first thing you should do is you should see if you should factor this. I'm like, nah, well, x squared plus 7, that doesn't factor anything. It's not a difference of squares. Um, so I'm just going to look at the denominator, which is x plus 4. So x plus 4 equals 0. I know that the vertical asymptote is going to be at negative 4. x equals negative 4. So, okay. And then, so we're looking at, we're going to look at another one. So here's an example where factoring is going to play a role. Um, so we're going to have um, it's x plus 2. So f of x equals x plus 2 over x squared minus 4. OK, so I know that uh, I see a difference of squares here at the bottom, x squared minus 4. So I'm going to go ahead and factor that. 
and I'll drop parentheses around this because you'll see why that helps in a second. I know that x squared minus 4 factors to x plus 2, x minus 2. So, and I'm like, oh, look and behold, I can actually cancel out the x plus 2 and the x plus 2, leaving the final function to be 1 over x minus 2. So we know that the denominator, we set that equal to 0, um, which would be, so we know we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. What happened to that x plus 2, you said? Well, because it, you know, it's still would equal zero on the den denominator, but it, you know, we kind of canceled it out. There's what's called a hole. Um, so it'll just be one point on the graph where it's, it will not work. So you know that there's going to be a, a hole at x equals negative two. But it would not be a vertical asymptote because it canceled out. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is a little bit more complex. So pause here um, if you want to take some notes, and we're going to move on. So the next one um, is f of x equals 5 divided by x cubed minus x squared minus 6x. So you know that your first step should be factoring. So right away, I see that I can factor by GCF because I know that all of them share one X. So I'll do five and then X. And then if I take that out, that'll be X squared minus X minus six. Okay, well then I'm looking at that trinomial right there. I'm like, wait a second, that's, you know, that's factorable. So, you know, I'll just bring out my trusty little X method always works, so put a negative six up here, negative one here, bam, that's gonna be negative three and positive two because those multiply together to be six and they add up to be negative one. So I know that the denominator for this one is actually x, um, x minus three, and then x plus two. So I'll go ahead and set the den denominator equal to zero. Okay, and thanks to good old, uh, you know, zero product property, I know that if any of these pieces are zero, the whole thing is gonna be zero. So I can break them up. So, okay, x equals zero, that's a vertical asymptote right there. x minus three equals zero, x plus two equals zero. So I know there's a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. I know there's a vertical asymptote at x equals three. And I know there's a vertical asymptote at um, x minus x equals negative two, okay? So you just set your denominator to e set your denominator equal to zero and then solve like you would any old quadratic. And that's, to find, that's how to find vertical asymptotes. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is um, rationals. So which solving what rationals using kind of cross multiplication. So I'm going to clear. Um, clear this, pause if you need to, to take some notes. And the last thing I'm gonna do is something that looks like this. So three over x equals two over x plus one. Okay, so, you know, if you see something like this in, you know, with just numbers, you know that the way to solve a proportion like this is to cross multiply. And honestly, you do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna multiply you know, because what we're doing is we're multiplying by the denominator on both sides, which is the opposite of division. So I'll do three times x plus one equals two x, right? Two times x, three times x plus one. So what I'm gonna do is then I'm just gonna distribute. And at this point, we're in algebra one land. So three x plus three equals two x. I'm gonna subtract, uh, you know, I'm going to subtract the 3x on both sides. So I'm going to get 3 equals negative x divided by negative 1. x equals negative 3. So the tricky thing when you're working with rationals, though, is you have to double check that your answer is good. Sometimes this process will create unnecessary answers, which happens. So I'm looking at here, x equals to negative 3. And that's a, that's a good answer because 
you know, if I plug in negative three for X, then I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna divide by zero, which is what we want to avoid. So we're in good shape. So the next thing I'm gonna do um, is this one. It's two over X equals X minus one and then six. So again, I'm just gonna cross multiply. So two times six, cross multiply. So two times six is 12. And then I'm left with X times X minus one. So I'm just gonna distribute. So then I have 12 equals X squared minus X. Well, I have a quadratic, so I'm gonna move everything to one side and set it equal to zero. So I'll subtract 12. 0 equals x squared minus x minus 12. Hey, that's factorable. Good old um, x method, 12 at the top, negative 1 at the bottom. Oh, that's got to be 3 and 4. So I'll do negative 4 and positive 3. So 0 equals x minus 4, x plus 3. And then I need zero product property with when either piece of this is zero, then the whole thing is zero. So I know that X is negative four and then X equals, oh, apologies. X equals positive four because right, your, um, your answer will be the opposite sign of what's there. And then negative three, there you go. So again, pause. Uh, for a second, and then we have one final problem, which is potentially the hardest one. So good luck. Okay, hope you paused, hope you took some notes. We're moving on. Okay, the next one we have is x minus 3, x plus 2, o equals x minus 3 over 2. So we're going to cross multiply here. And here we're left with um, 2 times x minus 3 equals x plus 2, x minus 3. So this one is pretty simple. You just distribute like that. However, this one, you have a binomial, two things times two things. So, you know, use your box. If you, I love, I love a box. It keeps me organized and, you know, it just works. So we'll do x plus 2, x minus 3. x times x is x squared. 2 times x is 2x. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. And then negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. I'll combine these middle terms. So 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So when I do that, it's going to be x squared minus x um, minus 6 and then equal to 2x, 2 times x, and then minus 6. All right, so what I'm going to go ahead is I'm going to go ahead and add the 6 to both sides, because I have a quadratic here, so I want to move everything to one side to get it equal to 0. Um, I'll start, I usually like doing the x's first, so I'll subtract by 2x on both sides. So I'm left with negative 6 equals x squared minus 3x minus 6. Then, um, you know, I will add 6 to both sides. And would you look at that, these cancel out. So I'm left with 0 equals x squared minus 3x. So, you know, I see a quadratic, I'm thinking factoring. So I see that I can factor an x using GCF. So it's going to be x equals times x minus 3. So then I know that if x equals 0, the whole thing is 0. And if x equals 3, the whole thing is 0. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and check that against my denominators. So the denominator is x plus 2. So we're not dividing by 0. So 0 plus 2 is 2. We're fine. 3 plus 2 is 5. We're also fine. So this is our final answer. OK, so that is what's going to be on the exam a little bit so hopefully this helps and good luck studying and um you know i wish you the best of luck thank you again all right have a great rest of the day algebra